Dear friends and followers, today I'll be answering another great question which was sent in by one of my YouTube subscribers. Joe, I've heard pilots talking about flex temperature. What's that? That's a great question, so let's get started. Uh, 1383, okay, first off, the flex temperature is always referred to the takeoff performance setup for many jet powered airplanes, except for Boeing. They call it the assumed or derated temperature. Okay, in my example, we will refer to an Airbus A320 with CFM turbofan jet engines. Now, many passengers have the impression that pilots always apply full power when performing a takeoff. But do you remember the last time you sat in an Airbus that shortly after takeoff, the engine sound decreased a little bit as if the power would drop? Well, that's due to the flex temperature and the climb power setting. So prior to every takeoff, you have to perform the takeoff calculations, taking many factors into account. First and foremost, the aircraft takeoff weight. The ramp agent will hand you a load sheet showing all the important figures you need for the calculations, including the stabilizer trim setting. And then you check the local ATIS and start filling up the module. So let's go with this example. We have the takeoff weight of 68 tons and these environmental factors. Once the calculation is finished, you'll get this data. So what's all this? You have the V1, the VR and the V2. Those are the speeds in the next topic for the next video and the flex temperature. Now let's use the suggested flex temperature of 58 degrees. So you type in 58 degrees on your performance page and now the FADEC, the full authority digital engine control unit assumes that the outside air temperature is 58 degrees and therefore the FADEC reduces the power purposely to reduce the engine wear in such expected hot temperatures. So when applying the thrust levers to the flex detent, the FADEC will give you a 85.3% take of power setting. Although you know there is some extra power left, which you can always access by applying TOGA on one third of the tent on the thrust lever column, giving you maximum thrust available. The result of using a high flex temperature is that the speeds are higher for liftoff because the plane won't accelerate as quickly as it could and therefore using up more runway, resulting in a shorter stop distance in case of rejected takeoff. So the conclusion of that is, the lower the flex temperature, so the fake outside air temperature for the FADEC, the more power will be set when applying thrust. So the closer it is to TOGA. The higher the flex temperature, the more the engine is derated, resulting in a longer takeoff roll with higher speeds and at the same time reducing the engine wear. So how can you as a passenger hear or feel the difference which flex temperature was chosen? The best example is Lanzarote Airport. The airplane is close to the maximum takeoff weight on a very short runway, therefore the plane needs a lot of power to accelerate as quickly as possible to reach the rotation speed. The engine will literally roar much louder and after liftoff and reaching the thrust reduction altitude, there's a reason why they've named it the thrust reduction altitude, where you set the takeoff thrust to climb thrust, and you'll hear and feel the power change, a reduction in noise and deceleration in the climb rate. But why do that in the first place? Why not just set toga thrust for every takeoff and go through all that hassle? First and most importantly is to increase the engine life, therefore reducing the chance of an engine problem due to a technical failure, more controllability of the aircraft with lower thrust output in case of an engine failure on the runway and just after liftoff. And obviously the fuel flow is lower using a flex temperature. To sum up, you would say the flex temperature is the sweet balance between the stop margin available on the runway and a longer engine life and fuel economy.
but there are cases where the use of flex temperature is prohibited. In case the runway is contaminated with standing water or slush, snow or ice or whatever, if the runway is very short at high altitudes and hot outside air temperature, or performance reasons due to obstacle clearance in the departure sector, the takeoff module will then calculate a toga thrust setting for you. Now maybe you've experienced this, you're sitting in a Boeing and as you gently lift up into the air and once you've reached the thrust reduction altitude, suddenly more power is applied. What's going on? Some takeoffs on the Boeing, the thrust for the takeoff is reduced even below the climb thrust. So let's say D-rated power is 75% and the climb power is at 85%. You can feel and hear the increase of those 10% in power at the thrust reduction altitude. And therefore, thank you very much for your time. Please subscribe to my channel and check out my Instagram account by the name Fly with Captain Joe and spread the word. See you next week. All the best, your Captain Joe.